you give me that money now, you won't be held responsible. If you don't, you may not get out of this cabin alive. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. You sure you packed everything, hey boy? Oh, yes, sir. That carriage should be ready by now. Driver promised, hey boy, he would hurry. He take you to railroad station in plenty fast time, Mr. Paladin. You'll have to. If I miss that train, I'll never make it to Carson City before Mr. and Mrs. Tartley leave. Leave? Oh, why Why would they leave before you arrive? They're going to Europe in three days. Oh, hmm. Oh, they take a ship from San Francisco to go to Europe? That's right. There's no need to catch a train. Mr. Paladin, see them when they come to San Francisco. <laughs> no. No, hey, boy, Mr. Tarpley has asked me to come to his home so I can see where he kept the money and find out exactly how it disappeared. Oh. Now, if I catch this train, I'll have a full day to talk to him before they leave. Ah. Uh, yeah. How are you going to find a uh, $10,000 in one day, Mr. Paladin? I don't have to find the gold in one day, hey, boy. Well, see, to me, they couldn't leave till you find money. Big trip like that take big lot of money. And the Tarpleys have a big lot of money. I'm sure the stolen money is inconsequential to their trip. In consequence... Never mind, hey boy, here comes the carriage. Oh, oh, yes, sir. All right, now, hey boy, listen to me. Don't I forget know, that... I know, I uh, know. Tell young lady in room 401 that you must cancel plans for tonight. Plans? Uh, tell Colonel Hodges you must cancel chess game tomorrow night. Right. Uh, tell Missy Wong to send clothes to laundry. He. Hey, when are you coming back, Mr. Paladin? I don't know, it all depends. But if I miss this train, I'll be back in an hour, minus my $500 fee. Oh, that... Uh, maybe Mr. Paladin better get in carriage. All right. Just put the bag up front, hey, boy. Hey, uh, Mr. Driver, uh, please to hurry before honorable passenger meets the most important train. With Christmas coming up, the chances are you have a special list of folks to be remembered. You know, the mailman, the delivery man... The many different people who've been friendly and helpful to you through the year. And what better way to express your appreciation than with the gift everyone appreciates. Winston, America's best-tasting, best-selling filter cigarette. This year, there are two handy ways to give Winston's. There's the special single carton, wrapped in gleaming red and white foil, with its own built-in card to carry your best wishes. Then, for an extra special gift, there's the colorful Winston two-carton package in the form of a gaily decorated Christmas house. Either way, you'll be giving pleasure along with your greetings because Winston is the cigarette that's designed for pleasure with both a modern filter and filter blend. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Roy Tarpley was one of those few fortunate men who had struck it rich in Nevada's Comstock load and was smart enough to reinvest his money in the silver mines of Virginia City. His shrewdness had paid off. Extravagant in their new wealth, the Tarpleys had built a mansion in the lonely Washoe Mountains near Carson City. The three-story palace had been designed by a famous Italian architect and the furnishings had been purchased in Paris and shipped around the Horn to San Francisco. They were busy preparing for their trip when I arrived. We might as well go to the library, Mr. Paladin. My wife's having the furniture covered in the parlor. That must be quite a job, Mr. Tarpley, closing up a house this large. Yeah, yeah, it's all last-minute stuff, too. We didn't plan on closing it. My wife's sister's supposed to come up from San Francisco, but she changed her mind at the last minute. She was going to stay here with Elaine while we was gone. Elaine? Yeah, it's our daughter. Oh. Well, isn't she going with uh, you? Nah, she don't care nothing about taking a trip to Europe. She ain't like her mother. We tried to persuade her, but she don't want any part of it. <laughs> when a girl gets to be 19, she can be pretty stubborn. <laughs> so I've heard. Well, where will she stay while you're gone? In San Francisco with my wife's sister. Well, she'll go in. Oh, oh, Elaine, I, 
I didn't know you were in here. I came down to get some books I want to take with me. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Pallin. Elaine. Hello. I can come back later. Oh, finish what you started. You won't bother us. Very well. Say, would you care for a whiskey, Pallin? Well, if you're having one, I'll join you. <laughs> All right. You know, uh, this is the room where it happened. I kept the money in the top drawer of that desk over there. Ten thousand dollars in gold is an awful lot of money to keep in your desk, Mr. Tarpley. Why? Man's made as much money as I have in the last ten years and wants to see a little of it now and then, Paladin. You know, my lawyer down in San Francisco takes care of all the banking, payrolls, bookkeeping. And got where I never did see any of that money, just statements. So I decided to keep a little of it here where I could use it for whatever I had a notion to. <laughs> here you are. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, all you have to do is find the man who took that gold. I don't know where he is, but I do know who he is. Oh, who? A boy by the name of Johnny Yeager. Well, that should make my job easier. Oh, you, uh, you finished in here, Elaine? Yes, Father. Can't you say excuse me or something? Excuse me. Uh, oh, forgive my daughter, Paladin. She's been upset with us ever since this happened. Why is that, Mr. Copley? Ah, she was pretty well taken with this Yeager boy. Oh, sit down, Paladin. Thank you, as you can see, she ain't the prettiest girl in these parts, and she never had any real boyfriends for this one. Now, she don't believe he took the money, but we know better. I see. Uh -huh. I had to fire him. The morning he left, we discovered the money was gone. Nobody's seen or heard from him since. Well, why did you fire him? Well, things were getting too cozy with him and Elaine. Got so you couldn't go down to the stable without finding them there love burden it. Now, I'm not the old-fashioned kind, pal. I can overlook a lot of that, but my daughter's old enough to know what she's doing. But her mother thinks different. The wife don't want her being courted by anybody that don't come from a good family, with money and all. That's the way she is. And this Johnny Yeager didn't have those qualifications. That's right. Came from nowhere. I hired him to help out with the chores. Did good work, though, but my wife said he had to go, and she proved to be right. He was no good. Could you make a guess as to where he might have gone? No, no one around here has seen him since he left. Well, I guess I can start out in the morning. Good. We're uh, expecting you to stay the night and accept our hospitality, such as it is, and all this turmoil. Say, hey, would you care for another whiskey? No, yeah, sure. I'll join you. Yes? Open the door. Elaine. May I speak to you? Yes. Come in. I I didn't want to intrude at this late hour, but I had to talk to you. <laughs> I've been trying to talk to you all evening. Why did you avoid me downstairs? I wasn't avoiding you. Just father and mother. Ah. Uh -huh. You're pretty upset with him, aren't you? Johnny Yeager did not take that money. Do you know who did? It doesn't matter. But Johnny didn't do it. And you're telling me not to look for him. Mr. Paladin, I know that Father has promised you $500. Well, I need your help more than he does. I'll pay you 1000 For what? To forget about the stolen money. And to go with me to see Johnny tonight. Now. You know where he is? Yes. Well, why do you want to see him tonight? Because tomorrow will be too late. I'll be on my way to San Francisco with mother and father. I was going to stay here with my aunt until she decided not to come and stay with me. Yes, your father told me. We didn't find this out until this morning. I'd promised Johnny that I would ride out to meet him after they left for Europe. Now I've got to see him and tell him that he'll have to meet me in San Francisco. We're going to be married, Mr. Paladin. Married? Yes. We planned it this way. Mother would give up her trip and stay here and fight it to the end if she knew. But once she's on that ship, she won't have a chance to stop us. And that's why I must do exactly as she says until she leaves. Will you go with me? Elaine, I've made a promise to your father. And I won't go against my word. You must help me, Mr. Paladin. I have no one else to turn to. I'll go with you. Sure, but not on your terms. I, I don't want your thousand dollars. But I will have to ask Johnny about the gold. Very well. I have no other choice as long as you'll go with me. I can't go alone. Where is Johnny? In an old cabin down by Lake Tahoe. It belongs to my father. I told him to hide there after everyone thought he'd took the money. 
It's just a two-hour ride. We can make it there and back before sunup. All right. I'll meet you in the stable in a few minutes. It was almost midnight when Elaine and I left the Tarpley stables. She made sure that her mother and father were asleep. I didn't like the thought of venturing out into the cold Nevada night to escort this girl to a rendezvous with Johnny Yeager. But this was the man who, I'd been told, had taken the money. And even though Elaine said this was not true, I had to find out for myself. Two hours later, as we approached the cabin, a snow flurry began to drift down through the tall pines. Mr. Paladin, there's a trail that cuts off to the left just a few feet ahead. All right. You see it? Yeah. This way, boy. Come on. Get going. <laughs> I hope Johnny has a fire going. Yeah. You know, if the snow keeps up, we may not be able to get back tonight. Oh, but we'll have to. All my plans will be ruined if Mother finds out. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking, Elaine. You didn't have to make this trip tonight. I could have come out here tomorrow to tell Johnny to meet you in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know you. He wouldn't understand. No. Anyway, I couldn't leave without telling him myself. Uh, is that the cabin there? Yes. Ooh. Ooh, boy. Looks deserted. He's probably been asleep for hours. Uh, here, I'll help you down. See if it's open. No, no, it's locked. You just have to keep knocking till he wakes up. Yeah, I hear him. What do you want? You you can put the rifle down, Johnny. It's me. Elaine, what are you doing here? I came out to talk to you. Who's he? Uh, Mr. Paladin, a friend of father's. He brought me out here. Why'd you come this time of night? Well, let us in and I'll tell you. No, uh, you can't come in. Well, why not? Because well, I ain't dressed. Oh. Well, we'll wait for you. And, and hurry. It's cold standing out here. Well, I... Uh... Who are you talking to? Keep quiet. Mr. Paladin, there's somebody in there with him. Yeah. That was a woman. Johnny, you let us in. Johnny! Go away, Elaine. No, who's in there with you? Go away. Johnny! That won't help. He won't let us in, not now. Is there a back door to the cabin? No, this is the only entrance. I want to talk to Johnny. I want to know who's in there. C can't you break the door in? Well, if I had to, but don't forget, he has a rifle. Oh, I can't believe he'd do this. There must be an explanation. Elaine, if he wanted to explain, he wouldn't have shut the door in our faces. Oh. Mr. Paladin? He's got the money in there. Oh. So your father was right. No. Johnny didn't take it. I did. You? Yes. I stole the $10,000 from my father. Why? Johnny and I needed that money. I gave it to him to keep for us. We, we were going to buy a ranch up north after we were married, where they couldn't find us, where we could be together without my mother interfering. Elaine, your father has hired me to find that money. I'll have to take it from Johnny, one way or another. Gifts that I yard me, almost Christmas, no time to lose. Lots and lots of gifts to choose. Is it too late? Give her a, a gift that's a yard me. 
For the man who's just a little choosy, there's a wide range of all-new Yardley gifts from $1.50 to $10. For instance, there's the after-shaving lotion and cologne combination, just $2.65. And there's a big, handsome set of shaving foam, invisible talc, after-shaving lotion, and cologne for $5.50. All prices plus tax. Yardley at all fine stores. Give him, give her a gift set by Yardley. Elaine and I again tried to reason with Johnny Yeager, but he wouldn't answer. Everything was quiet inside the cabin. Outside, the snow had stopped and it was getting colder. I knew I'd have to force my way through the door, so I told Elaine to stand by the horses out of the way in case Johnny decided to use his rifle. Paladin! Yeah? You bust that door open, I'll have to shoot you. Why don't you let me in? We can talk about this peacefully. You're not going to get that gold. You have no right to the money. It belongs to Mr. Tarpley. It's mine now, and I aim to keep it. Use your head, Johnny. Look, if you give it to me now, you won't be held responsible. You just better get away from here. Well, I'm afraid I can't do that, Johnny. I want you, Paladin. Don't shoot, Johnny. No, Stay there, Elaine. Johnny. You killed him. Johnny. Johnny. Oh, no. Hello. Oh, no. Johnny. He's dead. I'm sorry, Elaine. He's dead. Please. Elaine. Who is that woman? Who are you? Please, Elaine. You better go outside. No. I want to know what she's doing in here with Johnny. Who are you? I had a right to be here with him. I was his wife. Why? Yes. Oh, no. No, Johnny wasn't married. He, he made love to me. He was going to marry me. That was his way to get the money. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor girl. She might have known Johnny'd never fall in love with a girl who'd look like her. Where's the gold? In that cupboard behind the dishes. We haven't used one piece of it. I, I, I want you to know I, I don't hold with what Johnny did. We never had much. He said this was the only way we could ever get anything for ourselves. Well, why do you and Johnny stay here in this cabin? You know it belonged to her father. I know. We didn't have no place else to go. He knew they'd be looking for him, and he said that she wouldn't tell nobody we was here. This would be the safest place to stay. We were going to leave in the morning before she came out to meet him. You have a horse? Two of them out back. All right, get some warm clothes on. We're going to ride back to the Tarpley place. Uh, are we going to take Johnny with us? No. No, we'll bury him before we leave. What are you going to do with me? Well, that'll be up to Mr. Tarpley. Sorry about that girl. I know how she must feel. It wasn't good what Johnny did. No, it wasn't good. But Elaine is very young in the ways of love. She'd never been cheated before. And from now on, she won't trust others so readily. Maybe in the long run, what Johnny did will be good. For her. More coffee, Mr. Paladin? Mm. Oh, yes, yeah. please, Miss Wong. You're so busy reading newspaper, you mm. forget Miss Wong's still here. Oh, well, I was reading the article under this picture. Oh. You see those people? Yeah, where? There. It's Mr. and Mrs. Tarpley and their daughter Elaine, oh, some friends of mine. Fine. This picture was taken on the ship just before they sailed for Europe. Oh, it's very nice, huh? 
Those are people you see in Nevada last time you make trip? Yeah, they're the ones. Oh, Miss Warren remembered their name. Hey, boy, tell me about them. Here's your coffee. Thank you. We sure miss you around here when you're gone, Mr. Paladin. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to yes. say so, Miss Warren. Oh, yes. The hey, boy, worry all the time you're gone. Hey, boy? Hey, boy. Worry? Worry. About me? About you. Why? Oh, you say you have lots of gunfights. Sometimes you come back with bandage on head, or maybe on shoulder or arm. You worry, or sometimes you may not come back to Carlton. Ever. Well, I had no idea. Oh, yes, sir. I tell him not to worry. You are a man of great wisdom. Miss Wong, remember, at missionary school in Hong Kong, we learn of a man named Solomon who said, The law of the wise is a fountain of life. Uh, to depart from the snares of death? Hey, sir. That's the one. Well, what does Hayboy say when you tell him this? At first, he says he never knew this Solomon. But I teach him more, and he learns better. Uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good for you, Miss Wong. <laughs> This miserable cold and my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of colds infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan reaches all congested areas. In one fast-acting, uncoated, three-layer tablet, Dristan, for the first time, combines a decongestant to shrink all swollen membranes, relieve pressure and pain, an exclusive anti-allergent, to help keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers to ease body aches, reduce fever. Vitamin C to help build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated, but the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. For real relief from colds, misery, and sinus congestion, there is nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Joseph Kearns, Walter Stocker, and Virginia Christine. Station KREX of Grand Junction, Colorado, has just become an affiliate of the CBS Radio Network, and we're very happy to send our greetings and best wishes to its fine staff. This is Hugh Douglas, inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. (laughs) 